Michael Steele is chairman of the Republican National Committee, and he joins me in studio to talk about this. You're all smiles today, Michael. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, it's a good day. I mean, I think it's been a fascinating process to watch unfold. I mean, a year ago, the landscape politically was very different than we see it today. Uh, and as we go into this election, uh, what I'm excited about is that the American people have begun to take charge in these in these elections and the outcome. Uh, in the past, it's kind of been formulaic, you know, it's a, a Boston, Massachusetts Senate race. Oh, it's a Kennedy. Okay, no yeah, problem. Yeah, Democrats going to win. And it was that, yeah, it's a Democrat going to win. Understood. Not so much today, and I think that's the exciting part about all of this. I know that in your idea of a perfect scenario, Senator Brown, the Republican, would win, take his seat, and cast the one no vote that would yeah. derail health care. But the Democrats are trying to get this passed before he's seated, even if he does win. Does that concern you, that a victory for Brown does not necessarily mean a defeat for health care? Well, it, it says a lot about the agenda here, and it says a lot about the, the, the way the Democrat leadership in Washington views the voters out there. They really don't care. We, we're going to do this whether you want it or not, and you're just going to live with it. Uh, and so the idea that, you know, you'll have an election, a special election, to fill a seat, and that individual's elected, and if it's not of the party you want it to be, him to be, then you're going to go ram through the process or change the rules, uh, that, again, is an unseemly thing for, for them to do in Washington, but it's so typical of what we've seen over the past year. Wait a minute, but is that fair? Because wouldn't your party do the exact same thing? Isn't it true that when the GOP would, had the majority and the Democrats uh, would filibuster something? You know, you didn't I mean, like that. They're trying to keep you... Wait, wait, no, no. They're Maggie, trying to the keep you from doing over, the same thing to them that no, no, you no, no, did. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're mixing an apple and an orange here. No, no, The I'm filibuster really not. on an issue is not the same as seating a member in the United States Senate uh, regardless of what's going on in the Senate, there is a process that's, that unfolds. The Secretary of State does what they need to do. The Senate does what it needs to do. And the fact that they've already made it very clear that we will obstruct this process, that we will change the rules in order for us to get our way in the Senate, to me, is not what the voters so are going to the So you're implying that they would do the something about. illegal? I'm not, it, illegal is left for lawyers to decide. What I'm saying is that there is a process. And when you have Congressman Weiner and others saying that our job will be to delay and obstruct this process or to speed it up, mm -hmm. uh, if we can do that, to me, goes counter to what the voters in Massachusetts are expecting. They're expecting today they will elect a United States senator. Right. And when they, they expect that senator to be seated, in a timely fashion, and if that doesn't happen, then it's going to be a lot of weight on the Democrats' head in Washington. I understand what you're saying, and just so you understand what I'm saying, I was just saying that parties, as your party also has shown, will do whatever they can to get their agenda passed, because obviously it's in their best interest and in the oh, best that's, interest that's of very, voters. That's very true, but there's some things that have a natural process to them, as we saw when Ted Kennedy took won this seat the first time, they seated him in one day. Uh, Mrs. Songus just recently came into Congress for her husband's seat two days. So okay. now you have them saying, well, we could do this in about three or four weeks. Okay. I mean, this, that's the point. You're saying double standard, double but it's standard. convenient. But you kind of expect that from the Democrats <laughs> at this point. You know? All right, Michael Steele, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Let's get a Democrat's opinion on this. Terry McAuliffe is in Washington. He is former Democratic National Committee chairman. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Maggie. Haven't seen you in a while since the election. I uh, yep, great to see you again. You too, Terry. I, I, I want to ask yeah. you about this because Nancy Pelosi said yesterday, quote, we will have health care yeah. one way or another. Is this mm -hmm. really how you want this to go down? Even though technically it may not be illegal, it's still sort of unsavory because you're forcing it through? Well, I think what we have to see what happens today in Massachusetts, we've got to get our turnout out. I mean, the issues are great. It's about health care. It's re about reforming the banking system, the financial system. People are angry. There's an anti-incumbency mood out there. They want change. Martha Coakley will bring about the change that people want in Massachusetts. So we've got to get our voters out today. It is so important. But people want health care. President Obama ran for President of the United States promising Americans that those 48 million people who don't have health coverage would get it. We want to make it affordable, accessible, and we want insurance companies accountable. Scott Brown has already said he will side with the side of the insurance companies. He's against President Obama now levying these new fees on banks to get our money back. So there's a stark contrast, but this is a very important election. Uh, everybody knows the ramifications and implications of what the uh, Massachusetts Senate election means today. T Terry, if people want health care, why is a Republican yeah. so close to taking this seat in this state yeah. for the first time since 1972. 
Well, and I, and I think the problem we're in on health care is we have two bills, one in the Senate, one in the House. It's very hard to convey to the American public exactly what it is because we don't have one bill. Once this gets passed and people see the benefits, by the time uh, we move forward, I think it'll be an entirely different environment. But it's not just about health care. Maggie, this is about an economy. Uh, President Obama inherited an economy that was in the tank. He has worked hard. He has done exactly what he said he would do to get our economy moving again. You've seen the unemployment numbers uh, get better every single month. People are angst. Uh, they don't feel good about their own economic livelihood. And you know what? It's the Democrats and President Obama who have been out there fighting for them every single day, taking on the insurance company, taking on the banking uh, industry to try and help people, trying to get more money out there, trying to help people stay in their homes, buy a new home. So I think it's a whole combination of a very uh, angry environment out there because of the economy. And President Obama has been in for one year. He has made tremendous changes. He needs a partner. He needs Martha Coakley in the United States Senate. And I think to the folks here in Massachusetts who are watching it, this is your time to get out there and send a message. Let's continue moving forward with all these reforms that President Obama has initiated. All right, Terry McAuliffe, thank you. I'd like Thanks, to, Maggie. You're welcome. I'd like to give the, the last word to Michael Steele, who's been listening and shaking his head. Go ahead. Well, I've been shaking oh. my head because it, it, Terry is great on the talking points. And the reality of it is the people of Boston, as we saw in the people of New Jersey, I mean, Massachusetts, like New Jersey and Virginia, have a very definite idea of what, what they want and what they don't want. And I think the administration is erred on the wrong side of, of, of that particular equation. Uh, and the people are sending us a sound signal. Now, either they're going to get the message or they won't. Come this November, we're going to play hard and fight for every seat in the Congress and every seat uh, for governors around the country on the idea that it's about time we listen to the people instead of the people having to do what Washington tells them they want to do. Right. We'll see what the voters say today. Thank yep. you, gentlemen, both of you. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.